Hello, everyone. Um, <clears throat> so I'm kind of from the big corporation world, I guess, compared to you. <laughs> Although um, I'm not going to talk about technology at all, uh, since I come from uh, something called the User Experience Lab at Ericsson Research. Uh, myself, I'm a designer, kind of one out of two um, designers at Ericsson, I guess. Um, <laughs> So it's it's not Sony Ericsson that they make phones. We make the the kind of invisible stuff between this Arduino board and your phone, all the infrastructure in between, and how that SMS was paid for and all that stuff. Invisible stuff. Um, and when we approach this Internet of Things or whatever it's called this week, we um, we try to think about how people understand this interconnectivity. Um, the kind of the first step is to connect things and then to understand how all that together kind of um, creates uh, new possibilities that we haven't seen before. So basically for us is is about how how I mean the technology is fine that's we assume that's going to happen everything will be solved that it tends to be like that when when all the nerds get in and and use their time, um, but when when normal consumers are going to be faced with this extremely complex um, mashup of things, um, we were interested in, in exploring how to to find interfaces for that. Not necessarily the the graphic user interfaces that we see. Uh, but how are we going to understand that? Um, so we have worked for, for some years um, experimenting and trying to find something to build upon. We have like anthropologists and ethnographers living in people's houses for like four months just to observe and, and uh, theorize about how they um, perceive and experience um, all their things today and see if we can find any patterns or behavioral um, mental models that we can build on when we create new services and interfaces. Um, so we kind of, we went out and, and tried to see if there, if people actually uh, have some kind of sense or interconnectivity between the daily objects that we use. Um, and the answer that I think we got was nope. They don't really have this sense of interconnectivity. It's really a lot about interacting with one thing at a time, at a specific place, or two things in relation to each other. Um, we have experimented a lot with, since we are designers, we, we uh, create like this um, uh, new concepts for small networks how to make these things interplay with each other and how to understand and control them. But when we scale this relatively small and, and current kinds of networks up um, and present concepts which, which uh, kind of includes all the things at the same time and also have a layer on services on top of that and everything is interconnected, um, it becomes really hard to create um, good user interfaces that that truly um, uh, shows the power of all this interconnectedness. At least, what that was what we felt. It's it's really hard for people to to understand what happened between your Arduino board and and the phone, you can't imagine how much infrastructure and things going on behind the scenes. Um, and especially when it's wireless networks, um, we, we, we don't see it, we don't know what it is. And as humans, we tend to learn new things by, by looking backwards. What did we have before to explain what the new technology was? So basically, the wireless technologies that we have now, the networks, are understand as if it was invisible cables. That's kind of the, the idea we have to explain for ourselves what it is. 
And the cable is a typical thing that connects two things. It has two ends, A to B. And when that becomes the mental model for networks as such, it kind of we create a huge blind spot for whatever interconnectivity means. It's, it's basically the same as with we can see with uh, today's smartphones. People still tend to think about them as as telephones, although people hardly talk in them. Um, that's still the, the, the perceived main function. So it's a little bit the same with the networks. Basically, people are kind of intellectually aware that it is many nodes in a network, but they think two, two things at a time is kind of the, the way we interact with and understand it. And why is this important at all? Um, it's because we have a huge potential, we think, in creating creating new services and, and, and um, products that build upon not just A to B connections, but extremely many to extremely many interconnections. I'll show you a little bit later what that, what that could look like. Um, then during, during this research that we do, when we talk to people and try new products and, and prototypes on them and they give feedback to us, um, it appears that w everyone has a really good mental model already for a network, which is how we interact socially. That's also a network, but we think very differently about it. Then w w with social networks, we have no problems at all grasping this, that everyone are interconnected, that you have like multi-hop connections and that it is situated, that you might have one group here at a certain time and place, and, and everything is dynamic. So we, we try, okay, why not try to experiment with using that mental model on an Internet of Things? Just to make people understand the power of this interconnection, or the, the networkedness, or whatever. Is that a word? Networkedness? I don't know. Anyhow. Um, so this this is where I'm going to try my demo, which you <laughs> ripped out now. <laughs> I'm going to rip out your things here. It's a cable. So I'm not going to do it for real, luckily. I'm going to fake it all. That's a good thing about creating concepts. We don't have to actually do it for real. As long as it looks good. So... <laughs> Literally, um, we created something that resembles a quite well-known social network. Uh, although I don't have people as friends, I have things as friends. Um, so, I mean, this idea is, I realize now, it's, it's almost banal. But um, putting it in this context and um, creating uh, an intelligence layer that that connects to things, uh, reads their capability, and give them uh, a little bit of intelligence and the ability to speak. I mean, we, we talk about things that speak. We, we intend to create that, I mean, do that literally, <laughs> make things speak. So here, for example, I checked in here with Foursquare, and my lights at home reminds me that, hey, you're not here anymore. Why should we be on? We should be off. Okay, to that. Great, so, uh, sure. So this is your door, basically, but in Facebook style. <laughs> um, and, and, well, that could be fun. But the point here is to, is to show that, as on Facebook, all the other things that I have connected, my thing friends, well, I do have real friends as well, by the way, but they're on Facebook. Um, my here, here, for example, my, my camera at home um, can pitch in its functionality. Its speciality is to show pictures. Um, we could do this with Bambooser, I guess. Um, and it could kind of um, make me witness that the lights are actually off. Yep, looks good. 
I don't want to have this hassle every time I forget to turn something off, so that the lights here could uh, offer to, to do this automatically the next time. Next, good. Home automation, right there. Uh, and this, the last thing here, the energy company liking this. What is that about? <laughs> it's, um, for one, it's, it's a small gesture that kind of reinforces my feeling of everything being interconnected. That's one. Another thing is that it's a, it's a, it's a small branding thing. They want to encourage this kind of behavior that I just did. I want to associate with that. Um, and it's not a thing, it's a service. I'm a customer. So that's, that's one kind of um, um, usual suspect use case, I would say. If, we, if I were going to inspire a little more, if I see this is uh, crazy. Um, if you look a little bit further ahead when all the modules are dirt cheap and, and even Samsonite can have 3G modules in their suitcases, for example, I forgot my suitcase when I came here, or I lost it in the airport. So I should be able to. F oh. Okay, that's good. It's it's not lost, but uh, it's at home at least. Um, but I need it here, obviously. Uh, it's important stuff in that suitcase, like underwear. Um, so, if I could have this uh, Internet of Things also containing a set of real-life services, that could give me, like, the suitcase could go check what in the yellow pages, what kind of uh, courier company can bring it here and give me an offer. And I could buy that service here. I want it here. Let's see. And then I could sit back and wait for the suitcase. It will come. Or I could see the message here from the suitcase to the driver of this company. Uh, I mean, this could be FedEx globally or just a local bicycle carrier. Um, but basically here, uh, they could just go to my host. And since the door is a friend of me as well, I can open that remotely. Um, and my location is dynamic. It finds me here. So if I travel to another country, it will follow me around the globe, I guess. It would be huge roaming costs for my suitcase around the globe. Um, but, but these kind of things um, are not, I mean, one, it's intended to um, inspire a bit. Um, but it's really about trying to, to make people understand the power of this interconnectivity and how are we going to make mental models that makes people understand that. Um, and as far as we can see, this model helps in understanding this networkedness. So that, um, I think, was what I wanted to say. <laughs>